I sincerely believe we're going to see multiples, many multiples higher in, in, in value based in dollars, okay, as, as this person was referring to mo moving forward. Related question here about the future of the uh, precious metals, which you have mentioned several times as a hard asset. Sport, Sportgus.com says, let's say that gold and silver, quote, shoot to the moon before the great uh, monetary reset. Should, you, should one wait until the new currency is established after the reset before they cash any of their metals in? Do you think that scenario will be there to tempt people to release their physical gold and silver and literally get nothing in it for return in the short run? In other words, exchanging metals for the old currency, which is on its way out the door. Um, so again, this is theoretical scenarios looking into the future, but uh, your personal uh, perspective on on a potential monetary uh, reset and what role you picture precious metals or other hard assets having as a bridge across into that new world? It's an interesting question because as in anything, there's going to be a time to convert that any commodity into something else. But I would have to see the current environment at that time, honestly, and look at it and evaluate it. It's very difficult to say, okay, well, this is going to happen. I, I sincerely believe we're going to see multiples, many multiples higher in, in, in value based in dollars, okay, as, as this person was referring to mo moving forward. And uh, yes, I also believe sincerely we're going to get a new system. Um, it's already in the works. It's been in the works for a long time. And Gold and silver will then be priced in whatever that might be at that point. I would have to look at it and uh, and evaluate it. If there were an opportunity, let's say uh, if someone made so many multiples on their on their on their cash, they could always convert that into something else. But what? You see, there's the issue. It's always like you can't. You got to move it into something. You can't just cash it out, leave it in, in dollars that are imploding or whatever it might be, you're going to have to move it. And there there may be opportunities, depending on, on, on where, let's say, for example, the stock market goes. Co these companies, some of these mega companies, have value, all right? Let's say in, in, in an all-out meltdown scenario, you have precious metals, commodities have, have gone parabolic. They've gone straight up here. And you've got a stock market that, let's say, has lost 80% of its value. There may be opportunity for people to say, okay, you know what? I've made multiples on these investments, gold, silver, whatever it might be. And I see these companies here trading at unbelievably low valuations. It may be time to, hey, maybe we'll reallocate those funds. Kind of look at the individual situation there and see how it's going to play out. I do believe that we are going to see that kind of a scenario in the stock market. And there's going to be deals to be made. There's always deals to be made one way or the other. So we just need to look at it. And we'll definitely be doing this show when, uh, when this all happens. One of the things you mentioned a little while ago was, was relative strength of the dollar. People and markets tend to have this reflexive uh, movement for a safe haven asset into the dollar specifically. And uh, can you talk to people about why you combined that statement with another statement you made, which was saying people that are holding dollars are gonna get wiped out or are getting wiped out, that their value is getting stolen. Help people understand what you're talking about, about um, why holding dollars long-term um, is, is, uh, is theft from the individual, uh, results in theft of value from the individual and what is this thing about the relative strength of the dollar? Can you give us a, a people who maybe don't have a full understanding of that among all these fiat currencies that are all around the world falling in value? When we talk about the relative strength of the dollar, why is that not necessarily something to have a lot of confidence in as a store of value? Well, I mean, you know, there's two things that we, that's going on. You got the the relative strength. I like to say comparative strength because I've noticed on my blog, people have a hard time understanding what that means. So I've been using comparative. When we're talking about the dollar in relationship to other currencies, yes, as of right now, the dollar looks like the prettiest bell at the ball in comparative terms or relative terms. But in absolute terms, Open your eyes, people. Look at what's going on here. We're seeing its purchasing power evaporate. So that, I, I think that's the most easiest way to explain what's happening and why I hate, despise, and can't stand being in just dollars. You know, you gotta it is in this environment. You you gotta find at least somewhere else to put your cash to work, whether that means you need to, let's say, 
pay off your house. Um, it, it's, I hope people don't have adjustable rate mortgages here, and I know that a lot of people do. And I think they're trying to sell these things to people again. Does that sound familiar? Uh, yeah, they're trying to get people into the market again by offering them like this teaser rate, which is only going to skyrocket, and people are going to end up in the same boat they were in last time. It's a terrible situation. You know, what's happening also, you know, talking about just maybe something kind of related, is getting these bidding wars on rent out here where I live. You can't rent an apartment without getting into a bidding war or a house without getting into a bidding war. Okay, the landlord wants 1500 bucks. Well, guess what? You offer 15, some guy's going to come in at 16. He offers 16, some guy's going to come in at 1750. They're getting into these bidding wars. Um, that should say something to people as well. You know, I know a lot of people, and, you know, I get this too. Hey, Greg, is it the right time to buy a house? I don't think so. Um, I recently bought this house here, <laughs> and uh, but I got I honestly got it at a really good price because it needed a lot of work. But it, more than likely, uh, I don't I don't like real estate right now. I think it's a hyper bubble, along with everything else. And and as you and I have spoken about, this is all going to get very real, very very real for people. It's been getting real, and it's going to get real even faster. I think moving forward, and also I want people to continue to watch the debt market, more specifically the 10-year yield, what's going on with it. We went from a 3.5% on the 10-year to a 2.79% last time I looked at it today in just a matter of like a week and a half, two weeks. It's it's an unprecedented move, and we know why that's occurring here, but I don't think it's going to work. I think at one point here, we're going to end up seeing a rebound effect in that 10-year yield, which is going to start to sell off again, and that's going to put even more pressure on the stock market. That's just my take on it. Um, we'll see how much firepower central banks have. They have a lot. And um, how they, they manage to uh, keep the market so fake. I mean, the propaganda, the distractions and the lies, it's, just, it's out of control. And I think people are starting to wake up to the fact, I really do, that they are being lied to. Um, and it's just getting to the point where, I don't know if people are going to actually do anything about it. I hope they do. But as you can see, what they're doing is keeping these massively divisive issues in, in the forefront, you know, uh, Roe v. Wade and all this stuff coming. That's what they do. It's a psyop. It's a game that they play. And unfortunately, it's working. Um, but there are some people like you and me and the people that follow our work, at least, who can see through it. I really believe that. You mentioned earlier when you were holding up like silver coins and stuff off your desk, you were saying, I don't care in the short term what happens to the price because I see these as units of wealth. That transition of thought process to that the physical assets, whether it's tangibles, you, you invest in other types of tangibles as well, are actual units of wealth. Uh, Chris Copeland asks, can the USA, including JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, etc., afford to let gold express its monetary potential? I don't think they're going to have any choice um, at one point. I really don't. I, I know we all understand what's going on. It's pretty obvious. Everybody knows it, and I mean everybody. Everybody knows. Um, I just think it's a matter of time before uh, these these things, uh, people start to understand that they need to. You know, the thing is mostly people don't know how to acquire it. You know how many people write to me and say, hey, Greg, how do I get this stuff? Well, I think that's an area you can cover. Um, but a lot of people write to me and they want it. They don't know how to get it. They are like, I want to invest in this but I don't know how to do it. I think people are waking up. And I think the more and more that they start putting this stuff away, eventually we're going to end up with that uh, issue. But again, it, it comes down to the movement of cash through markets. You got right now, again, we, we started to see that spiking in the 10-year yield put a lot of pressure on the stock market. And and I, you know, there's always a lag effect where money starts to move. It, 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 it kind of gets confused at first. What would have eventually happened in my view was all this cash would have just moved uh, into the safety of real things, hard assets, crude oil, other commodities as well. I still believe that 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 scenario is going to play out in a massive way at one particular time. They can't keep doing what they're doing here, um, artificially suppressing rates. Um, a global phenomenon that's going on, it's been going on since 2008, hasn't stopped ever, and they're continuing to fuel that right now, obviously inflating this bubble in debt. It's going to burst. Every bubble bursts at one point, no matter how much effort that they put into it. 
And that's and that's what really scares me the most is that moment there, which we got an inkling of. We really saw it when we saw that bang, bang, bang in that 10-year yield. And they immediately rushed to an emergency monetary policy stance to prevent it. So there's a lot of effort going in. But I don't think they can stop it. I think eventually it's going to occur. And it's only going to be worse because all they're doing is adding fuel to the fire. 